From WLWT, this is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues. I'm to Michael Bobo, filling in for Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney, who will return next week. We have an amazing show this week. We will talk about a lot of different things going on with the Cincinnati Public Library for February, as well as we'll hear from a life coach. Right now, I'm here with the lovely Nzinga Bird from Sweet Sister Splash. Hello, Nzinga. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us back. I'm excited to be here. Yes, you've been here quite a few times before, so I'm happy that you get a chance to be with us today. Give us a little information about Sweet Sister Splash. Sure, sure. Sweet Sister Splash is a cultural center. We're located in Over the Rhine, Cincinnati on 13th and Sycamore. Uh, we've been there for five years now. We're excited about uh, continuing our success in Over the Rhine. What we do is we provide all different types of programs, classes, workshops, things that uh, pertain to the African American culture, to women, children, men, the whole entire family, uh, cultural programs. And we also serve as a business hub to small businesses in Cincinnati. They're able to sell their products at our space and host their own individual programs and workshops. Okay, so the workshops you all have, can you give us a little information about some of the workshops you've held before? Sure. If anyone out there watching would like to go to our Facebook page and click on events, you're able to go back all five years and see everything that we've done. Um, every Monday and Tuesday, we have Kundalini Rise Yoga. We do belly dancing once a month. Coming up in February, every Friday, we're going to have uh, holistic couple healing workshops with a, with a married couple. They've been married for almost 30 years in our community. Um, we also host reading circles for children. Uh, there's an event called Ladies Night Out that happens quarterly where women come and they learn about everything from healing their hearts to their wombs. So we have some really amazing, beautiful programs that happen down there. Okay, and how do people, is it a cost for the programs or how do people attend the programs? Some programs have a fee and then some programs are for free. So it really just depends on uh, the nature of the program and then also who's hosting it because we have a team that we work with but then we also uh, invite people from the community to come in and get creative with our space as well. Okay, now how did you get into creating Sweet Sister Pl Splash? What's your background? Um, my background, I've been an entrepreneur for life and um, I was raised to really be into culture and to really value my culture. So it just kind of splashed together. <laughs> it Hence splashed. the words, Sweet Sister Splash. Right. Um, and that also speaks to the collaborations that we have in the city with different women-owned businesses. So that's the Sweet Sister, and then the Splash is when we all bring it together. Uh, we started doing programs, Daphne and I, the co-owner, mm -hmm. her and I started doing programs together at one year before we actually opened up our space. Our programs were so successful that we really just wanted to grow and expand. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you've had a, several events, and one of the events you're here to talk, discuss today is Out of Africa. Yes. Okay, and you've had one installment of it. This is the second installment. Uh, tell us a little bit about the first installment of Out of Africa and what the information, what, what you all talked about. Sure. Well, Out of Africa is one of the programs that we hold in the community. We don't hold all of our programs at our space because some things are bigger than our space. So Out of Africa, the first installment was held at Joseph Clark Art Gallery in Northside. It's a really beautiful establishment if anyone has, hasn't been able to make it out there. He has beautiful pieces of art from all over the continent. Um, but Out of Africa, the second installment will be held January the 14th and it's going to be at the Carlinder Y, YMCA downtown. Okay. Now, out of Africa, we, we, we like to say it's like watching a time capsule open in front of your eyes. Mm. What we do is we tell the story of the diaspora, the entire diaspora, maybe the last 600 years or so, and we tell that story through the arts. And we use local artists to tell the story. So you'll see a mix of African drumming and dance to theater arts, to singing, to visual arts, martial arts, live instrumentation. You'll even see the body as canvas 
as the picture that was shown a little bit earlier. So we have artists that paint our artists. Okay. And we bring together all of these artists to tell the this story. This is one of the pictures here? Yes. Okay. Yes. And who did this out of Africa picture here? Well, this is Amira and Zumbi, Mazimoyo. They play, they are actually husband and wife, and they play husband and wife in the first installment of Out of Africa. He is the warrior and she is the warrior's bride. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't start Out of Africa, uh, Out of Africa. I actually thought it was important to go back onto the continent and tell our story before mm -hmm. slavery. Mm -hmm. So the first installment actually told our story about our family, our values, what was important to us, our lifestyle, and it told this story through the arts. And we used this husband and wife to tell that first, that first installment. The second installment is going to carry us through those four to 600 years of mm -hmm. captivity and not just through the Americas, but through the entire diaspora. So we will be representing our story in South America, in the islands, in Europe, and we'll be representing that story through the arts. So it's going to tell that part. The third installment will tell the last 200 years or so, okay. up until the present day. Mm. And then the last installment is our Afrofuturism installment. Okay. So what our story will look like in the future. All right, and now how can people reach you? What's the number for Sweet Sister Splash? People can call 513-332-1575 for more information about any of the programs that we have. Okay, now go ahead and give us more information about Out of Africa and the, the dates and everything. Again, Out of Africa is January the 14th. The show starts at 5 p.m. We have an African market with local artists and vendors that starts at 3 p.m. and the event is from 3 to 7. It's at the Carl Linder YMCA downtown on Lynn Street. Okay. Thank you so much, Nzinga, for being with us today. Thank Out of you. Africa sounds like a wonderful event. We look forward to it. Next up, we will have information from an inspirational list, a life coach. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today I am talking with Pamela Pitts, also known as Pamela the Inspirationalist, founder of LeBay. Welcome, Pamela. How are you today? I am great. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. You just you have such an essence about you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so give us a little information about your background, Pamela the Inspirationalist. Well, Pamela the Inspirationalist, well, to start off, um, I'm a mother of five. My second oldest is a cancer survivor. Hmm. And um, doing a, a, an experience with that whole ordeal, that's where the whole name LeBay, Living Blessed and Empowered, came from. Um, so Pamela the Inspirationalist, I'm, I've always been told like, Pamela, you have such this bubbly um, attitude about life. So I'm like, well, let me bring forth that energy and inspire other people to do what it is that they want to do because um, I'm also a clinical mental health counselor as well as a licensed cosmetologist um, as well as a nationally certified interpreter for the deaf and hard of hearing. So what I've done, I've taken everything and I've enmeshed it all together. So LeBay under the whole umbrella um, is a holistic consulting company which services the community through a variety of services, whether it's um, sign language classes, cosmetology services, hair and makeup, and LeBay also has its own cosmetic line and apparel line. So I have all together 24 concept t-shirts now and the whole full cosmetic line. So that's the cosmetology part. And, um, and then um, what else do I do? Oh, as a nationally certified interpreter for the deaf and hard of hearing. Um, that is actually what I do um, professionally. Mm -hmm. And then I teach sign language classes for those who would like to learn the language and become bilingual, bicultural. And who have you done your um, interpretation or interpreting for 
I heard you helped someone out this summer, I believe. Uh, I will, Bill Clinton, yes, I was blessed to be able to interpret for him. I've also done um, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. I've done quite a few gospel artists. So I'm known in the community for um, being the interpreter that you will call on to do like the high status, quote unquote, people, um, which I'm truly blessed to have that. Um, so yes. And how long ago did you begin LeBay? When did it start? LeBay started in 2013. And that's what I was saying. Um, my daughter was diagnosed with synovial sarcoma cancer. It's a cancer that eats your organs. And she was diagnosed in 07, and it swallowed her whole left kidney. So she's living now. She's cancer free. Thank you. And yes. And um, so one night we were in the hospital, and she was journaling from her perspective as the patient going through it. And I was journaling from the mother's perspective. and. I just, it was like, you know how you have that woe is me attitude, like why is this happening to me? Oh, I can't believe this is happening. As a mm -hmm. mother, I had to be strong for her, even though I still felt all of these different emotions. So what I started doing was just writing. And then in 2013, something said, because we went through the ordeal from 2007 all the way to until. Mm -hmm. So in 2013, I started to get all of those papers out. And for me, I'm a true believer. And my God says to write the vision and make it plain. So that's what I had done, but I didn't do anything with it. So when I started like putting everything together, LeBay, living, blessed, and empowered, came out because that is what I'm doing. I still experience hardships just like everybody else, mm -hmm. but it's how I choose to handle my hardships, meaning I don't just lay down and stay there. No, I get up, I dust myself off, and I keep moving. So that is what I try to um, instill in other people. It's okay, we're gonna experience things, but you don't have to stay there. You can get up, you can dust yourself off, it's okay. Every day we have a brand new day to start life over. So if it's something that you did in your past that you didn't like, you mm -hmm. can change it and do it again. So with that, it led me to want to go a little deeper into my family, whereas, like I said, I'm a mother of five. My, um, my youngest daughter, I adopted her because I lost my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. So many people assume that I have five children that I birthed. No, I have four children that I birthed and then one that I adopted. But with that being said, my family um, was going through um, serious um, situations where mentally, I'm like, well, how do we deal with all of that? So that's what prompted me to go and get my master's in clinical mental health counseling, okay. where I am now able to um, help not just women, but men, children, on a level to where now not only do I understand from my own personal experience, but now having that educational foundation, that knowledge and that background to be able to say, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And you've done some events concerning, Le, from LeBay. Yes. So talk we, about a little bit of the, some of the events you've had. We just had prayer in action and oh my gosh, it was phenomenal. And prayer in action, that came about because in the community, a lot of us, especially now, um, are hurting and we don't know what to do. We don't know who to talk to. And even if you you suggest seeking a counselor, most people don't want to do that. They want to hide. Okay. So, um, quote unquote, I don't like um, just putting it out there. I'm a clinical mental health counselor. So I approach it by, well, um, I do life coaching. Let's see what kind of direction you know you would like to go in because that's less th th labeling. Now, let's tell our viewers how they can reach you. Well, you can reach me. You can contact me um, at area code 513-655-8000. Six five five eight thousand. Uh -huh. My email address is LeBay, L B A E Studio One L L C at Gmail dot com. Okay, let me give the um, phone number one more time. Five one three six, six five, five, five five eight thousand eight zero zero zero. Yes. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Thank being you with us so today, much. Pamela the Inspirationalist. Yes. We will be right back with some information from the Cincinnati Public Library. Welcome back. I'm here now with 
Brian Powers from the Cincinnati Public Library. How are you today, Brian? I'm great, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to have you here today. So you are the reference librarian at the Public Library. Mm -hmm. And which, which areas do you focus on at the library? Well, I work in the Genealogy and Local History Department. And one of the things I'm in charge of is, is programming for Black History Month. So okay. this is my sixth year doing it. So. Sixth year doing it, and you have a lot of events coming up. We have, an, uh, uh, for the month of February, every Saturday, we have events going on for Black History Month. And we always try to have a theme, and this year we're kind of focusing on the arts. Okay. And our, our kickoff event is going to be a local photographer who's been, a, uh, been in this area a long time, since the late 40s, uh, as a photographer, and that's Mr. C. Smith. Uh, and we're going to have a program on his career on the first February, first Friday, and uh, first Saturday in February, February fourth at one o'clock. Okay. But we're doing an exhibit of his work. In, in fact, we're doing three exhibits of his photography. It's over two hundred images. We'll have throughout the whole library. And so the three exhibits, people can come see those at any time. Open or? to the public. Uh, the exhibit is actually starting later this week. It's going to start uh, on January thirteenth, and. Uh, on Saturday, January 14th at 2 o'clock, we'll have a little reception so if people want to come down and, and meet C and have him talk about his photography, you know, look at his photography and have him there. So well, that'll be at 2 o'clock on Saturday the 14th. Okay, and is there a charge for the uh, everything on is Saturday? Free. Everything's is free. free. I like that word. <laughs> but uh, C. Smith's a really interesting guy. Uh, I've kind of gotten to know him in the last year. He's you know, He started doing photography when he was 13 in 1947. It's, uh, oh, no, 49, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And uh, his first job was working in a dark room, developing film for the Cotton Club, which was in the West End. And oh, he yes. used to take pictures, and he used to develop the. I mean, that's what he started at out as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, a lot of people know C. Smith, uh, but some people don't. I I had heard about him, but I had never met him. I, I you know, but he, he you know he's done so much uh, different kind of photography. You know, he's of course done a lot of portraits. A lot of important people in Cincinnati of the civil rights era, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of judges, you know, mayors, uh, presidents, the Dalai Lama, all sorts of people. And uh, he's also done a lot of, uh, you know, he's done a lot of photography on, um, like the riots of 1967 in Avondale. He captured that. He has a, a, a photography series on that. And so we'll have all that included in the exhibit. Okay. And we also have information when you all, the pictures that we have up are mm -hmm. some of the ones that he has shot himself. Yes, every one of these is a C. Smith photo. This is Mark uh, Pastor, who uh, started a, okay. a clothing store or a gift store in, uh, in Swifton Commons in Avondale back mm -hmm. in the 80s. Okay. Uh, that's Peanut Jim. A lot of people know Peanut Jim. He used to sell peanuts at the old Reds games. Okay. This was at his little workshop. A lot of people know that guy. That guy's, <laughs> I think that guy's name is James Brown. It just might be. Who used to record here in town in Cincinnati in the 60s. And that's him at Lincoln Airport. That's, of course, Mr. C. Smith himself mm -hmm. with his camera. He's got a lot of cameras. We'll have some of his cameras on display at the library. Yeah. That is the Drivers. They were a local doo -wop group who had a couple of hits back in the 50s. Uh, that's Leroy Jones okay. on, the, on the left. Uh, he's known as a... Some people know him as a bondsman, but he back in the back in the day he was really? part of the drivers. Did mm -hmm. not know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was taken at the Cotton Club, I think, in '54. I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You are in the genealogy department. You know a lot about what's going yeah, on in the history. Yeah. Yeah. And when you hang out with C. Smith, you learn all sorts of history. You know, because he's 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 been everywhere and, and knows a lot of people. So. Okay. What also are some of the the reception is going to be on that Saturday the 14th. The 14th. Now, uh, that's sort of to help sort of promote what's coming up for Black History Month, which is, I said, a kind of theme is about the arts. So the first Saturday will be on C. Smith. And then the second Saturday, we're continuing the photography theme. We're going to have Thomas Jordan, who's a genealogist, who is going to do a little workshop on how to use uh, your photos in your scrapbooks or in your closet mm -hmm. somewhere, how to do genealogy, get clues to do your family tree. And uh, that's at 11 o'clock on the, you know, I have my little cheat sheet here. Uh, <laughs> that's on the 11th at 11 o'clock. Thomas George will be doing that. Later that day at 1 o'clock in Makerspace, that's a, one of our newer departments where we have all sorts of fun gadgets, digital stuff. We'll, uh, we'll do a little workshop on how to repair your, you know, maybe scan your photos, different ways that you can preserve your photos. Okay. Now, is that February or January That's 11th? That's February, February 11th. 11th. Okay. Yes. All these events are going to be happening in February. Perfect. Uh, the third Saturday, February 8th at 1 o'clock, we're going to do a panel discussion on 
the jazz scene, the history of jazz in Cincinnati. So we're going to talk about a lot of the jazz players that came out of here and some of the different venues where jazz took place over the decades. And some of the people on that panel, we're going to have Laura Gentry, who's from Jazz mm. Alive. Mm -hmm. She's been helping me put this together. She basically recruited these people. But we'll have Marvin Greer, who's also a very noted local photographer yes. who, who loves jazz, who's, who's been a, who hung out at a lot of those places. Uh, we're going to have a local musician, Pat Kelly. We're going to have Kathy Wade. And we'll also have local promoter Arzell Nelson on the panel. Okay. That again is on February 18th. The last Saturday, February 25th at one o'clock, we're gonna talk about the history of black theater in Cincinnati. And we're gonna be having Dr. Tony Darnell Davis, retired professor from UC. Yes, I have him for yes. drama at yes. UC. So okay. he's gonna give us a, 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 a you know, history on, on the different attempts that have the different ways that they try to put on black history before the black theater, Cincinnati Black Theater got started. Great, now how can people reach you to get more information if they need to? Best way to reach us is to call the Genealogy and Local History Department and that number is 513-369-6905. Okay, give us the number one more time. 513-369-6905. Thank you so much, Brian, for being right. here with us today. We learned a lot about what's going on in February. We'll be right back to get some more information about our calendar events that are coming up frequently, like really soon. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome back. We have a few calendar events. First up, we have Movable Fest, which will be Friday, January 20th, from 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. at the UC College Conservatory of Music. For more information, call 556-2528. Next up is the 68th Annual Meeting for Glorifying the Lions, which will be Friday, February 10th at noon at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, located at 151 West 5th Street, for tickets, you, the tickets are $65. And last, we have the Daddy Daughter Dance, the Daddy Daughter Dinner Dance from the Cincinnati Herald. That'll be Saturday, February 11th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Duke Energy Convention Center. $5 for daughters, $5 for daughters, excuse me, $5 for daughters and $15 for dads. For more information and tickets, go to 961-3331. Now that Daddy Daughter Dance is gonna be really great. We look forward to all of the things that Cincinnati Herald is bringing to us, and we are going to try and go out to the Cincinnati, and we're going to go out to the Cincinnati Public Library to see all of the great free events. And we'll, Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney will be back next week. Thank you for being here. Have a great week.